On the eve of Christmas 1971, Lanza Flight 508 was en route from Lima to Pacalpa when it met with one of the most catastrophic lightning strikes in aviation history. The disaster claimed 91 lives instantly, leaving a single, seemingly hopeless survivor amidst the vast, unforgiving Amazon rainforest. This is the shocking true story of Julianne Kepke. Born on October 10, 1954 in Lima, Peru, Julianne Kepke was the child of two immigrant German natural scientists, Hans Wilhelm Kepke, a biologist, and Maria Kepke, an ornithologist. Her life was anything but ordinary, as her childhood was steeped in the richness of the Amazon, where her parents conducted their research. To pursue this research even further, Julianne's home at the age of 14 became a remote research station deep within the Peruvian lowland rainforest. She was homeschooled for years in the rainforest until she was sent by educational authorities to return to finish high school in Lima. Despite her unique upbringing, she successfully finished high school in Lima after doing years of homeschool, graduating on December 23, 1971. She planned on leaving a few weeks prior, but decided not to due to her graduation ceremony. By the time mother and daughter were ready to fly back to Panguana, the only tickets available were for Lanza flight departing at noon on the following day, December 24th. Lanza, short for Lineus Aereus Nacionales South America, was a commercial Peruvian airline originally founded in 1963, which provided a much needed connection between Lima and other regions with Peru. Over the years, as the company expanded, international destinations such as Chile, Honduras, and Miami of the United States were added to their roster. The company had a notoriously bad safety record. They would often use planes that were old and not fit for flying. In almost all their accidents, engine maintenance procedures were to blame. They were considered a very last resort airline. The flight, despite Lance's poor safety reputation and a specific warning from Julianne Kepke's father to choose a different airline, was the only available option for Julianne and her mother, who were eager to get home for the holidays. This led to them boarding the ill-fated flight which ended in tragedy for most on board. Lanza Flight 508 was packed, without a single seat left open. The urgency to maintain the holiday schedule and the captain's additional flight commitments led to a grave oversight. Instead of circumventing the dangerous weather conditions, the pilot, prioritizing his punctuality over safety, decided to proceed through the storm, directly implicating the crew in the ensuing tragedy due to this perilous judgment. The flight departed shortly after noon and quickly ran into severe thunderstorms, which were prevalent during the region's December wet season. Then, a loud boom, as lightning hit the plane and caused a fire in the right wing's fuel tank. Immediately sending everyone into a panic frenzy, the aircraft started violently shaking with the loud noises of the storm. The intense heat and fire led to the structural failure of the wing, causing it to detach from the aircraft. This catastrophic event destabilized the plane, leading to its breakup in midair. The plane began to dive sharply into the tropical forest jungle. Her chair fell out of the plane two miles above ground level and started spinning, which slowed her descent. This, combined with the forest canopy of the ground being soft due to the rain, turned a fatal fall into a barely survivable one. People started falling out of the plane, Julianne Kepke said. Well, it was a terrible situation. The plane was jumping up and down. We have had very, very heavy turbulences, and it was very dark around of us and we saw the lightning around the plane and in that moment I also uh, became very very nervous. Were you trying to calm your mother down? Well we uh, hold our hands and uh, we were not able to speak anymore in that moment. And were the rest of the passengers panicking as well? Yes they began to cry and to weep and to scream and because of the turbulences, the parcels were flying around the cabin because the compartments were not closed as they are now. The so the luggage compartments opened and everything fell out? Everything fell out, all the gifts and flowers and Christmas cakes and 
such things. And was there a moment when you remember an impact or a lightning strike hitting the plane? Yes, after going through the storm for about uh, 10 minutes or a little bit longer, I saw a very, very bright light on the right outer engine of the aircraft. And in that moment, my mother said very calmly, that's the end, now it's all over. And these were the last words I ever heard from her. And uh, from that moment on, all happened very, very quickly. The plane made a jump and a nose dive and fell down vertically. And I remember up to now this horrible atmosphere in the cabin. The people screaming desperately and it was pitch black around us. And uh, the deep roaring of the plummeting engines, it was a noise that filled my head completely. And then from one moment to the other, all that finished. All that stopped and I was outside the plane. So you were suddenly outside in the, in the open air? Suddenly, yes. I was outside the aircraft. The plane broke into pieces at a height of about two miles, as I learned after my rescue. And I remember clearly that I felt completely alone in that moment. I was in a free fall. Were you still in the seat? Yes, I was strapped to my seat bench and hanging head over heels and I remember the whisper, whispering of the wind that was the only noise. I was aware and I saw the canopy of the jungle spinning around beneath me and then I get unconscious and uh, I did, lost my consciousness. Did you have time to be frightened or was it just impossible to, to feel any emotions as this was all happening so quickly? Yes, it happened too quickly. It was impossible to feel panic or fear in that moment. I only realized what was happening and then I passed out and I didn't remember anything from the impact. Of the 92 people on board, only Julianne Kepke survived. She woke up unconscious, huddled under her airplane seat. Her neck, ankle, and shoulder hurt. She had a broken collarbone, a ruptured ligament in her knee, and several cuts and bruises. She called for her mother over and over again, feeling scared and helpless, only to hear the sounds of the rainforest. She heard planes overhead searching for the wreck, but due to the tree canopy, those remains were not found. Juliana's teachings from her parents and survival instincts kicked in. As she got up, she traversed through the forest trying to find any open area. She found a candy bar from the plane crash, which was her only source of food. Over the next few days, she stumbled around the rainforest, scared for her life, searching for a creek. She then heard a bird cry. Because of her life in the Amazon, she realized this bird nested by the river. In search of water, she followed the bird to eventually find a creek. Creeks tend to lead to rivers, which is normally a sign of civilization. So Julianne followed the river constantly on guard for snakes and other wildlife. She slept on sandbanks, drank river water, and slowly ate a bag of sweets from the wreckage. She was alone, scared, starving, in danger, and severely injured. She still had faith that other survivors lived and looked forward to seeing her mother. At this point, she didn't know the fates of any survivors, but came across more plane wreckage. She found three human bodies attached to the seats beside the river, being preyed on by vultures. This killed her morale, as she realized her mother was probably dead alongside them. Her watch stopped working around 9 a.m. on December 28th. She continued to push through the forest, trying to keep track of time, but could only keep a rough track. She followed the river for days until January 3rd, when she found a hut with a boat next to it. Now, 10 days after the initial crash, she waited in the hut and treated the wound on her arm, which was infested with maggots. As a child, her father treated a similar wound on their pet dog using kerosene. She then siphons gasoline from the boat and uses it to treat her arm. On day 11, her staying at the hut paid off due to awakening to the sound of men. She thought she was hearing voices, but then the three lumberjacks came out of the forest and froze in shock when they saw her. They questioned what this random beat-up girl was doing inside of their hut, but she stated she was a survivor of the Lanza flight. 
Hearing about this on the news, they helped patch up her wounds and gave her food. After resting for the night on day 12, they took a seven-hour canoe downstream to a place where airlifting to a hospital was possible. She then learned her collarbone was broken, her ACL was torn, and she had a partially fractured shin. After officers interviewed Julianne, they found all the plane remains and concluded that out of the 91 total people, all six crew members and 85 of the 86 passengers had died. Julianne was seen as the miracle girl receiving letters about how powerful her story was. News articles started making up stories about Julianne including rumors that she had abandoned other survivors. She and her family moved to Germany, where she had a full recovery. Grieving her mother's death and haunted by survivors, she would have nightmares. If you have watched this far into this video, this means you're probably enjoying it, so please consider leaving a like, subscribe, and comment something you found crazy about this story. She went on to college and studied zoology like her parents and ended up getting her PhD. Her father then passed away 13 years later, and she took his place as the director of Panguana and coordinator of its research expeditions. She is now married and goes by Dr. Julianne Diller and spends her life preserving the jungle that she crashed in all those years ago. In 2011, she published a book about her situation called When I Fell from the Sky, the true story of one woman's miraculous survival.